Hello, welcome to Rad Exchange. My name is Craig Dial, and I'm here to talk about maximizing your cone beam CT. We've been discussing cone beam CT resolution and how to improve your quality, as many factors can affect the image quality. <clears throat> and today, we're going to talk about software settings. Sometimes in our software, we extract data in a uh, DICOM format, and DICOM stands for Digital Communications in Medicine, in case you didn't know. And when we load up the scan data, we will sometimes get corrupt DICOM files from these different software programs. I just wanted to kind of go over a few software settings that you need to be aware of when you're sending data to beam readers or to any customer uh, or any third party 3D rendering where things may not work. They say that I can't read your DICOM. Sometimes I'll get corrupt DICOM where it'll flip it backside, upside down, doesn't load the CT data correctly. It gives me an error in the software and it crashes. I just want to go over some of those things. One of the things that can happen is when we compress the DICOM, the computer will take all the individual files and compress them to a smaller file format. And this particular uh, file that I scanned, I received from B-meters, when I reloaded it, made it look like there was patient motion artifact. It's fuzzy, it looks like it's a blurry image, you can see with the yellow lines. But if you look at the 3D volume render of the uh, patient's jaws, it's really smooth and clean. And so really what happened is when the data was compressed, it became inconsistent. All DICOM files are supposed to be the same size. And this particular scan, when it became corrupted, were different sizes. You can see that these file sizes are all different sizes, and each one represents one slice. So you might take the scan, and then when you export the data, it can be corrupt. So if you get a message back from B-meters or your customers saying, I can't utilize the scan data, you might just check to make sure that the files were exported correctly. This has got double images because the files are not set up correctly. And that can happen sometimes. Also, uncompressed DICOM, sometimes on B meter cases that I've received, has extremely large files. This particular DICOM was eight, over 800 megabytes large, which is huge. So uncompressed CT data does not always equal quality scan data. Just so I want you to know that. Also, you have filter settings in your software from mild to sharp, and every machine and software platform has it different. But you can see sometimes no filter makes the image look a little bit fuzzy. And then you have from mild to sharp filters that sometimes can improve image quality or an extremely overly top sharp scan uh, filter will ruin the scan. Make sure that when you export the data that you realize, realize don't put any filter on it and just kind of leave it as the natural DICOM settings, so you don't overemphasize any structures. And on a particular machine from iCAT, make sure that your quantum IQ filter is turned off. The quantum IQ filter from iCAT was created to reduce noise and enhance soft tissue. This was made by engineers. The problem is they didn't ask the radiologists if this was an enhancement or not. It really degrades the hard tissue image quality. So the OMR's request, do not check the quantum IQ box before reconstructing the images. And for those of you that have the iCAT, you'll see in this particular window is the image option, the quantum IQ. And you can reconstruct the CT data if this was checked by accident. The raw data can be reconstructed. And let me give you an example with the filter off and the filter on. Filter off on one side, the left, looks like a decent joint. The filter on, on the other side, looks like the joint has been degenerative all over. And it gives you a false sense of what's really happening. So if you have an iCAT, please do not use the quantum IQ filter on the settings. Another thing that you can do to improve quality of your images when you're taking CT scan is the display, the way that we look or display the images. So we might scan at one resolution, but we display at another. An example might be, I might scan a case at a 0.2 voxel scan. That's very, very thin slice. And at first you might think that it looks noisy. A 0.2 millimeter slice 
looks noisy because it's not very much information of the patient. So what we do is we stack the slices up to one millimeter thick, where I'll take five slices to stack the jaw and get the image to look a little cleaner. A lot of software does this automatically, but let me give you an example in case you want to do these things in yourself. Here's a two millimeter voxel thin slice. And if we stack the slices, we want to be able to see the canal and the edge of the bone. So all I've done between the two millimeter, 0.2 millimeter voxel and the one millimeter voxel is stack the slices. And see how you can see the nerve canal very cleanly now. The other one looks a little bit noisy. So these are just a few hints that you can use to help improve your software settings. I hope this has helped you. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you from Rad Exchange. My name is Craig Dial.